Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our RimWorld Rome Let's Play. I almost called this Jurassic RimWorld. Um, anyways, just to uh, get this out of the way now, I will be releasing the mod collection alongside this video. In fact, by the time you're seeing this, I will have already uh, retroactively added it to the uh, previous video's descriptions, and it will be in the description of this video as well. So, it's everything I'm currently using in this playthrough at the moment, including stuff that I've added between the last episode and this one. So, this is, I think, pretty much finalized. I might add a few other things uh, sparingly, but uh, all in all, I think we're pretty much done adding mods. So, uh, you guys also seem to really enjoy the little history lesson at the beginning of the last video so we're gonna do another quick one here as well um, though this might be more in the vein of metallurgy than history though it's gonna incorporate both uh, looking around the map we have a lot of different colored uh, like mining nodes around and it, it turns out that the mods that we're running add a couple of different types of metals for us to harvest so we have iron ore now we have copper ore there's compacted bronze, I believe, somewhere, probably. Uh, compacted steel there. There's some compacted bronze. So we've, all, we've got all these different types of metals, and we'll have to decide how we want to use them, because obviously, in RimWorld, being sort of a survival game, we have limited quantities of everything, and we have to, you know, make the best use of what we can harvest. So let's talk a little bit about metals, especially during the Roman times. So let's start by talking about the unsung hero of the metal world, and that is copper. The reason I call it the unsung hero is because, in a lot of ways, copper was the first metal. In fact, uh, as we see here on just sort of the Wikipedia introduction to copper, it was the first metal to be smelted from sulfide ores, first metal to be cast into a shape in a mold, kind of a big deal, and the first metal to be purposefully alloyed with another metal to create, of course, bronze, which we'll talk about a little bit as well. So, why copper and not something else? Well, if we look at the types of metals that we see in use before the Iron Age, there's a common sort of thread among all of them, and that is, of course, that they have relatively low melting temperatures, because the ancient technology that they had available to them at these times did not produce fires hot enough to melt things like iron and so it was prohibitively difficult to work with something like iron because you could not melt it which is kind of important because if you want to separate a material a metallic material out of a rock a really good way to do that is to heat it up until it liquefies. I don't know if you've ever tried to melt rock, but if you haven't, go ahead and do it and let me know how it goes. Um, chances are, uh, melting it is going to be completely sufficient to you know separate that. So uh, if you can't melt it out of the rock, then you know you're kind of stuck with the rock as part of your ore, which is not ideal. Um, it also plays a role in smelting, because smelting is kind of a similar process, except for, uh, I think generally they use low oxygen environments to separate out the oxides as carbon dioxide to get a more pure form of the metal. Um, but that came a little bit later. Early on, they would have just been melting the metal to separate it from the rock. So... Copper has a lot of other interesting things about it. Uh, obviously, we're familiar with some of its uses. I'll talk about those in a second. But uh, it's a native metal, so it occurs in nature, well, or it can occur in nature in a um, directly usable form. And before they found out that they could you know, melt it out of the rock when they mined it, there are or at least, I don't know if this is theorized or if they've found evidence, but it's believed, is, is how I'll say it for now, that they would basically chip copper out of rock and then just hammer it into sheets rather than doing any sort of process to it at all. So it was effectively usable right out of the gate, obviously, as technology got better, they had better ways to implement it, but they could just 
chip it out of a mountain and start hammering it. And it was soft enough that they could hammer it into sheets and malleable enough where it wouldn't break in doing so. Unlike something like iron, which was uh, softer than bronze, but I believe harder than copper. However, iron was more brittle than both. And that's sort of a common thing that you're going to discuss when talking about metals is um, sort of the malleability and how brittle they are. So a, a metal can be soft, but still, you know, relatively durable in that it won't, like, chip. Or you can have something like, uh, this isn't a metal, but glass is a great example of something that's incredibly hard, but very brittle. So you can't solely look at hardness when talking about a metal, because something like glass is, you know, I think twice as hard as what, uh, a modern steel hammer would be. However, if you made a hammer out of glass, it'll shatter when you hit anything. So it's just too brittle. Iron, especially the way that they would have worked it in very ancient times, would have been more brittle and therefore a little bit less useful. Anyways, those are two common things that we'll kind of mention as we move forward. So, um, uses for copper... We think of stuff like copper wiring because it makes a great uh, conductor. Uh, not so relevant anymore, but copper pipes used to be a big thing. Nowadays we use synthetic materials for that because copper is prohibitively expensive to be using in piping. And um, in currency, though uh, less so these days, when we think of the, the American penny, um, I know other countries, like Canada used to have a penny. I don't think they do anymore. But um, there's a funny story behind the penny, at least the American penny, which we'll talk about briefly here. So before 1982, the penny actually contained about twice its worth in copper. So a penny worth one cent actually contained like two cents worth of copper and therefore it was more valuable as a raw metal being melted down than it was um, as actual currency. Of course, it wasn't entirely copper. There was other stuff in there. And these days, it's basically zinc with a copper plating. I don't know if it was always a zinc core. But again, it, it was more valuable as metal than as currency. And even though they've reduced the amount of copper post-1982 to make production of pennies cheaper. In the United States, they still spend, or we still spend, I am American, uh, about twice a penny's worth in production of said penny. And as they mention here, um, that comes to the tune of about $55 million lost. Well, here they're saying it went uh, down from $58 million the year before. So... Next time you hear a politician talk about how there's not room in the budget for something, remember that we're losing about 50 to $60 million a year producing pennies. So, just a fun little side note there. Going back to copper, another nice or interesting little fact about copper, and one I find especially interesting because I am a biologist, is its uh, role in arthropod hemolymph, which is their equi equivalent of blood. They don't actually have blood, which, you know, why when you step on a bug, they don't bleed red. Uh, it's kind of like a brownish, greenish color. Uh, and that's because they don't have hemoglobin, which uh, is primarily colored by the iron in it. They have hemocyanin, which is named for, like, the color cyan. Uh, but anyways, hemocyanin uses copper instead of hemoglobin and iron. So just kind of an interesting little fact there. Uh, I don't think a lot of people really put that together a lot of the time. Um, it's something that when you tell people they're like, oh, huh, like it, it makes sense, but I don't think a lot of people ever consider it. Um, I also find it funny here that when they give an example of vertebrates with hemoglobin, they mention fish. Uh, I don't know why fish would be your first example. Humans come to mind or just mammals in general, but yeah. So copper. Interesting metal, but none of that is something that you couldn't just pick up from here. So let's talk about its kind of role in the greater scheme of things. So if we look at melting temperatures, 
These are some common ones. Unfortunately, the iron that they have on here is, I don't think is very representative. Like wrought iron is probably as close as we'll get to like what the Romans would have dealt with. Um, but if we look at ones that they probably would have used or are commonly uh, like mentioned using, we have copper, which is actually relatively high at uh, about a thousand degrees Celsius. Then we go to stuff like lead, which is only 327. That's pretty low, and that's why the Romans did frequently use lead. In fact, um, their very early rudimentary plumbing was often lead, and uh, there's a lot of studies that have been done regarding how much of a role lead poisoning may have played in their overall health and the effects of it on their environment, because they did actually use quite a lot of lead. Um... They all, there's also tin, which is incredibly low at 232, and again, that's a fairly significant metal in that without tin, you don't have bronze. So, kind of a big player there. And then zinc, which is something that they would occasionally use. Um, it, it's more commonly sort of an additive for producing an alloy. I don't think they would have ever used zinc for anything else, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but fairly low at about 419. So those are the ones that you'll see mentioned most. And again, the, the temperatures are all fairly low. Wrought iron is about 1500, so a full uh, 500 degrees Celsius higher than copper, which again would have been impossible for them to achieve with their early technology. In fact, copper was probably at the absolute like maximum of what they could do. So that is of course why copper was such an important early metal. If we look at, uh, I think we've already taken a look at this last time. This just mentioned some of the techniques again, melting, so just separating the slag and the metal through pure heat. Smelting, using reduced oxygen um, to separate metal oxides into metal and carbon dioxide, and blah, 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 blah. So just some basic stuff there. So why bronze over just basic iron? It, it turns out bronze is pretty much a superior metal to the iron that they would have had access to in just about every way. So it's less brittle, as I mentioned, uh, lower casting temperature, which for a long time would have been enough to be the only reason really because if you cannot cast the other metal then you can't use the other metal um it's more corrosion and rust resistant so that's kind of a big deal too if, you know you have um an iron spearhead that's rusting it's going to require a lot more maintenance than a bronze one that might not require any and then it's stronger so bronze is harder than iron and less brittle Again, kind of important because that means it will resist deformation better. It won't dent as easily, but it is also less likely to shatter or fracture. Again, the glass hammer thing. So while it is a harder material, it's also more resilient, and that is kind of a big deal. So, of course, steel is kind of the trump card here in that it's better than all of the above, but... As we saw last time, the Romans didn't have access to steel nearly as early as you know they would have had access to bronze. The Bronze Age starts very early. They don't actually give a time period here, but I've seen stuff that attests to copper being used as early as like 9000 BC, though um, they mention it here as well that... Um, Copper j is just not sufficient as a tool because it's not hard enough. It's, it's too soft a material, so if you were to try to use an iron pickaxe, or sorry, not an iron pickaxe, a, a copper pickaxe, there's a good chance that you would probably just dent the end and not really achieve what you're trying to. But there are other applications where a copper tool might be sufficient. A, a copper-headed hoe or a uh, shovel might be fine depending on you know what you're digging into if it's fairly soft soil it doesn't really matter what metal you're using it's probably going to be hard enough but for something like a pickaxe a stone pickaxe might be superior to a copper one in fact um, 
it probably was. That's why we have a Stone Age and not a Stone and Copper Age. But there are places where bronze was never a thing. They mention here that in the Americas, um, bronze production was never discovered. I don't know much about that, so I can't attest to how true that is. I'll just have to take their word for it for now, but I, I don't study the Americas very much, so uh, I couldn't verify that myself. But, you know, they still did use copper extensively, and it was sufficient for what they were using it for. However, when they finally have the ability to start producing iron, there were some advantages to iron as well. Despite it being a slightly inferior material, it was a lot more abundant. Iron is one of the most abundant uh, elements on the planet, and so you can find it pretty much anywhere that you're going to find any sort of ore. You also didn't need to worry about alloying iron. So the issue with bronze is you need copper and tin. If you only have access to copper, then you don't have bronze. And the copper itself isn't especially useful in tools. So if you are trying to arm a bunch of troops and you need bronze spearheads and bronze armor, but you only have copper or you only have tin, then you don't have armor or spearheads. So you needed both materials and you needed to be able to alloy them. So if you you know, were part of a culture that hadn't discovered that, or you were just not able to get both materials, then iron was the superior material. Because if you're looking at iron versus copper versus like tin, iron is better, but obviously if you put the copper and the tin together, then you come out with something even better than that. Of course, if you put the iron together with carbon, then you get something even better than all of the above. And uh, they mentioned the Hittites here, who were, as far as I'm aware of, the first people to ever have steel. And they had it for a lot longer than anybody else I can think of. So they mention here um, the success of the Hittites as conquerors. The Hittites being from Anatolia, which is uh, modern-day Turkey. 13 and 14th century BC. So that is, uh, I believe, a thousand years before we saw any of the Noric steel mentioned uh, as used by the Romans. That isn't to say that the Romans wouldn't have had access to steel before that, but that still gives them nearly a thousand years before the Romans. All right, so um, hopefully you guys found that interesting. We're back into the game and we got a couple things we need to do. Uh, yes, this tree absolutely needs to go. Um, we also have a murder pig on the loose. This pig is out to kill us, so we'll need to call up some people to deal with that. Atius is still healing as well. And I did, uh, as I said before, add a couple of mods. So we have new things available to us. Um, one very important one that I think I discussed last time is packed dirt flooring. So this is far more historically accurate than the wood floorboards that we've been laying down. And so we're gonna want to replace those wooden floorboards with this packed dirt. And I'm just gonna do the spots that have already been done for now. However, we'll probably pack the dirt uh, at least in a small path along the wall on our near side, but also probably do a pretty wide area of it on the far side of the wall so that anything that approaches us will be marching across uh, a clear field and not have any cover to take advantage of. Of course, we are going to have to clear cut that area, which is going to take an eternity, so I don't want to you know, jump to that straight away. What we'll also maybe consider doing that's been discussed in the comments a little bit is trying to terraform a little bit of a moat. That is partly why I chose this location is because of the bodies of water. So if we connect them, we'll have a little bit of a moat. To keep things fair, I probably won't do deep water moats because that seems a little bit ridiculous and that will make the area completely intraversable. 
except for, you know, I'll obviously have to leave a gap so we can get out. But if I made deep water all along here, they would not be able to cross it. So what I'll do is either marsh or at best shallow water, which you can still traverse. In fact, I don't think, yeah, there's no difference in traversal speed. So it, it really doesn't matter. It's more an aesthetic thing. But we might do a moat. In fact, uh, we're pretty likely to. Oh, come on, don't do that. There we go. And in front of the walls, but before the moat, I'll put in some of those sort of like hedgehog barricades, the spiked ones. I do have a mod that adds them, though apparently they're like pretty deep in the tech tree for some reason. So we'll have to figure that mess out. But that should prevent or at least deter people from trying to climb the palisade, which they can, of course, do. Um, let's see. Let's cancel, again, all of the wooden floors. We'll copy this again, and we'll just pack dirt everything all along here. I'll get the gate too eventually, but right now it's not critical. Also, we have new means of preserving our food. It's not the best solution ever, but we can now smoke um, any raw meat. It still works as meat. In every other way but it lasts a couple weeks versus a couple days so it just gives us a little bit longer to work with the meat but we're still on a fairly strict timetable so we'll just put that in right there and I'll probably ask that that gets built straight away in fact Atius how badly are you hurt I think you'll be fine do me a favor and build that so that I can ask Tanya to start smoking any raw meat we have, especially once we butcher this warg. There's also the dead wolf there, and a couple of dead animals out here that we'll want to capitalize on. I believe we're also, yeah, pretty much done with pemmican, so what we can do is start turning this rice and that meat into pemmican immediately. And that'll, of course, last a lot longer, so pemmican's going to be a big deal for us. The other thing we need to do is build some sort of storehouse. If this stuff sits out here, it's going to deteriorate and get wasted. So what I'd like to do is build some sort of like warehouse maybe here. It's obviously going to be in our walled area, but this is a limestone wall that is perfectly usable. We have a bit of limestone available and a bit of marble. There's also plenty of limestone chunks. It feels a little bit weird building with limestone instead of marble, but it has a better color to it, in my opinion. So if we go to structures, the marble is a little bit darker. It's kind of a medium gray, whereas the limestone is a very light gray, which makes sense, but I think this is a better color for the aesthetic we're going for. So, um, let's do something like this. And I believe that was the center right there, so we'll leave that open for a door. We'll also need to obviously make some room inside. So let's grab, uh, we'll just do this, grab that packed dirt floor. It doesn't require any materials to make this. We literally just have to clear the space and dig out the soil effectively or pack down the soil to turn it into packed dirt, which makes perfect sense. So we've got all that and I think that's enough for now. So let's get things rolling. We'll keep an eye on the pig. In fact, it looks like we need to deal with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Stilico just kind of come handle it. I think he'll be fine. He is a Roman warrior after all. I hope he can handle a single pig. He's got the shield as well, so I think he'll be okay. Now, if we can down the pig without killing it, that'd be great. Oh, in comes a stray Pila. And eh, we killed it. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. So far, the... Uh, the weapons seem to be working pretty well. They switch back and forth between them exactly as I would have hoped. Um, can you, instead of butchering, refuel the smoking pit first? Then you can butcher to your heart's content and then smoke all the meat that you butcher. What are you doing? Oh, you're still sad wandering, right? I need that tree cut, damn it. But she's the best person for the job and everybody else is just ignoring it. <sighs> he could do it, but he's down here building that. And, you know what, Stilico, I'm going to wake you up. Just cut this tree down for us. 
Get it out of the way. There you go. Uh, apparently he's going to get back to work instead of going back to bed. That's fine. It's still pretty early. I don't know why he went to bed so early, but whatever. So, another thing we need to do is start working on the hygiene junk. So, let's throw down a well. I'll make this out of marble, I guess, since we have marble cut. Um, that seems like a good place as any to throw it down. Either up there or down here. That's closer to the house, so we'll do that. We also need a latrine. And probably a burn pit. Oh, we're being raided. Okay. Well, I was wondering when that was going to happen. We've got, what, three? Three people? Okay. Um, what are we looking at? We have Eel, who is... A kind, sanguine gourmand. Pretty well-rounded as a character. No shooting skill, but he can wield a melee weapon, which I feel like is more important in this playthrough. Um, is a pretty damn good cook, so he could take over those duties from Tanya. And not a bad craftsman, either. He's carrying a wooden knife. Then we have Mole. Or Mole. Um, who's ascetic, bloodlust, and very neurotic. Uh, he could be a real problem in terms of mental breaks and starting fights. But Ascetic is kind of nice, especially in this playthrough. Exactly the kind of fighter we're looking for, but doesn't offer much else. I guess mining. So, he's looking like a soldier. In fact, yeah, he is a warrior. A tribal warrior. So, for us, he would be a legionnaire, probably. Who does a little bit of mining in their uh, free time, which is uh, pretty apt, I feel like. And then, Gorar Batan, who is a staggeringly ugly undergrounder who's a careful shooter. Not careful enough, apparently, because she has absolutely no skill in that. Doesn't offer much in the way of combat in general, in fact. Could have some potential for construction, but beyond that, it's looking pretty rough. So, she is, I think, the worst of the three. Him being probably the most ideal. Actually, I think Eel is a little bit better. Yeah. Eel, I think, is the best character by far, actually. You do have some utility, though. You, not so much. We'll see how this plays out, but ideally, we want to keep those two alive. Though I'll have to figure out where the hell I'm going to put them if we capture them. So before we deal with that, I wanted to build a latrine. Um, how I'm going to do this, I don't know. Let's go like one, two, something like this. Uh, we'll throw a door on it. Though I don't even know if that'll work properly. It might need to go further out. And then we'll put a latrine down right there. And we'll do all wood because wood is the most plentiful thing we have. Alright. It should take them a while to get here. So in the meantime, we'll just kind of pretend like they're not here. Uh, what is going on out there? Tanya, what are you doing? Oh, she went all the way out there to wash. Yeah, we need to get that well built. Um, we'll do that after... The raid probably or if they wake up before the raid gets here then we'll have um, Constantine do that but otherwise we'll do it after the raid because yeah I don't want them having to go all the way out there to wash which apparently they can only do in either shallow or deep water they can't do in marsh water I guess you wouldn't want to wash in marsh water probably so it makes sense but as soon as we have this down they can just wash in the well so that's good enough Loka, are you ever going to come back to us, or are you just going to sad wander forever? Oh good, Atius is up. Oh, and he's puking his guts out. Great. But yeah, because they're not washing enough, they're getting sick, so we need to really deal with that. And off he goes to wash. You know what? Do that. You're good enough at building. If you get this done, then you don't even need to run out there. You can just wash when you get here. Um, they're still not coming our way, huh? That or they're just not having an easy time figuring it out. Given how dense this forest is, it's entirely possible that there's no traversable path. Um, that could be a problem. And I do sort of regret adding this mod because it is a bit ridiculous. I didn't think it would be this extensive. Okay, well she's probably going to pass out due to starvation soon enough and we'll just 
throw her in bed, feed her, and hopefully she's fine. Okay, they're beginning their assault. And they seem to know a way here. They're moving pretty good, actually. So, it is taking you an eternity to build that thing, isn't it? They're getting close, so let's call up our people. Where do we want to put you guys? I guess for now, just march to here? Atius, I'm going to have you pause that. And Tanya, since you have a sling, you're going to help us. I'd love to bring her bow into the mix too, but obviously that's not an option. Uh, where are you going to try to cross? Just coming straight at us, huh? Well, let's form a line then. And Tanya, make sure you're right behind Stilico. Oh, you can't because of the thing. Yeah, you need to get closer, otherwise you're going to friendly fire us. Okay, we're engaged in melee now. Please don't kill him. Okay, perfect. Um, fantastic. Betten is fleeing, or Baton. Come on, you guys. Making this look real hard. Right, we got all three without killing them. The issue is, of course, where do we put our prisoners now? <laughs> um, it has to be an interior space. I think what I'll do is it's easier to just kind of tack stuff onto this. So let's go to structures and can I build an effective prison out of palisades? I don't know if I can support. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I can put a roof on these. So I'll just copy these walls then. I think they're inexpensive enough anyway. And we just need enough room to throw down some sleeping spots. So, oh right. We'll do that. Plus a door. And I'm going to ask that you immediately get on that. Okay, good enough. Stilico, are you much of a builder? Yeah, you can help us. Oops. No? Okay, fine. And... Whatever. So we'll get this built, we'll throw down some sleeping spots. We'll take probably two, these two prisoner. Um, you'll be fine. They don't have anything that looks like it would be permanent. Where are you going? Okay, you're taking a crap in the open, that's fine. That's fine, we'll get you guys uh, latrines soon enough. Are we... Oh, I need to put a build down. Whoops. That's my bad. Uh, let's do the 40 first, and we'll say do forever, and then we'll do the 10 and do forever. So they'll do the larger one if they have enough available. If not, they'll do the smaller one. But there's no reason not to smoke the meat because it's still usable as every other type of meat would be. Uh, so it doesn't take anything away. It just preserves it a little bit longer. Of course, if we're turning it directly into... Uh, pemmican or something then there's no real need but it certainly doesn't hurt it just wastes a little bit of time uh, buddy can you stop getting high real quick and build these walls because if these guys get back up it's gonna be a real pain in the ass uh, Luke or Loka why will you not stop this stuff this, I think this is the longest sad wander I've like ever seen where are you going now no, no, no. Come on. Finish this. Alright. That seems excessive, but that's the only way he's actually going to get it done. And I'll have him do the door last. We'll go into... Not structures. I don't know why I always go to structure. I'm looking for furniture. And we want some sleeping spots. We'll turn those into prisoner ones as soon as this is an enclosed space. I don't know why I did three. Let's get rid of one. We only need the two, of course. And I don't know what we'll do with you. I don't think she'll actually bleed to death. I think she'll probably heal enough to get up and run away before she does. 
And if she makes it off the map before she bleeds out, the game will treat it as though she's just fully healed. Because we'll probably see her again. Okay, Tanya, you are smoking meat. Perfect. Dude, you and that smoke leaf joint. Come on, finish this. Yeah, I know you need to be treated. You're really not in that bad of shape, though. Okay. Stop what you're doing. Thank you. Come over here, build that, and then build the door. And then I'll let you take a break. But I need this built. Did you get the corner? Yeah, you did. Something about that looks weird. I'm not sure why. Whatever. They're still not up yet. So we're okay. But we're running out of time because one of them was not that badly hurt. Okay. Right, the roof. I don't think the roof matters, though. As long as they can't get out, it should be fine. So, build roof area. Yeah, you've got that figured out. Let's turn those into prisoner beds. Stilico, I'm going to ask that you be the one to do this. And Atius could kind of use your help. What are you doing right now? If you're going to eat, then do me a favor and grab the other one first. Then we'll ask Tanya to treat them. Probably won't use any medicine on them. We'll just give them the basics to make sure they don't bleed out. And if they get an infection, then we'll maybe use the medicine. But otherwise, I don't see a reason to waste it. That uh, meat smoking sure is slow, though. All right, off you go. Uh, oh, yeah, we should probably get on that. Right. Perfect. Oh, you're going to use medicine. Um, you know what? It's fine. Just don't use any more. Whatever she's got there will be the last she uses. So on eel, we'll say none. And when she uses up that, I'll change mole over to none. Research finished on our pemmican, so we can actually start using this now. Um, we'll just say do forever. Because the pemmican will last a hell of a lot longer than the nutrient paste, or the, we should call it gruel or something if we're trying to role play here. The gruel only lasts four days like a simple meal. Pemmican lasts about a year, which is more than enough. An eclipse, uh, that sucks, that means our food's not gonna grow. All right, you should be just fine. Um, you're resting. Do you think you could maybe patch Eel up first? Because technically he is bleeding to death. Just incredibly slowly. You are also injured, but you don't seem to care much. And honestly, you're not that badly hurt, so it doesn't really matter. Um, rather than whatever you're doing, please come over here and finish this. Then build the latrine, and then build the stuff around the latrine. Oh, dirty cooking area. Yeah, we should probably get all the uh, blood and vomit out of here if we're going to be cooking in here. Stilico, can you take a quick break and just throw him in bed? He'll live, obviously. What a mess. Be easier if I didn't have somebody just wandering around permanently but eventually her starvation is going to get so bad that she just passes out actually her exhaustion is probably going to hit first we'll see yeah but she's going to go down due to one or the other never mind she actually broke out of it before uh, either of those hit she's going to eat now and then probably jump in bed for a long time but I'm glad that she is no longer doing her thing because we kind of need her planting food. Luckily, we have other crops growing. But we never replaced the rice that we harvested. And that's, you know, kind of an issue. Really, I'm surprised. Oh, she's taking a dump. All right, fair enough. Then she's going to go wash. 
Uh, you stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. I guess, fine, do this. Nope, don't you run off. Finish what you started. If you're not going to build me a, a well, then you're going to build me a damn latrine. Ah, the old double whammy, so we got hit with Blight, too. The game is just intent on killing us off now, apparently. So, we need to deal with that straight away. Let's make sure we have this set to cut everything that's been affected. Hopefully, we can get it before it spreads. Get that one, too. Then, I will go to our uh, work, and plant cutting is going to be number one for a moment. Uh, I need you guys to wake up. Why can't I draft you? Oh, he can't walk right because of the major diarrhea. Tanya, I need you to do this. I'm going to have to prioritize it, I guess. I didn't want to have to do that, but even setting it to one, she's still going to put other things ahead of it. Where is Loka at the moment? Oh, she's still like way up here. Oh, no, that's Stilico. She's on her way down. Looks like she's going to bed. I need her to do this first. So we'll have her start on the right. Don't equip wood, damn it. Um, crap. Ah, you know, whatever, it's fine. We just need them to start doing it. Tanya can probably get through a lot of it on her own. Um, you're still building the Palisade, which is perfect. I'll just have to kind of micromanage this, I guess, since they don't seem to want to do it. And you are apparently capable of moving again. That's good. Whoa, buddy. You're not going to bed yet. You finish that, and then I'd like you to finish this, too. Alright, so I think we saved our crops. I don't see any more blight, so it shouldn't spread. And we still have pretty much all of our strawberries and what little rice we had planted is pretty much unscathed. If we need more food, there are a lot of berry bushes around, so we can harvest those. And there's a lot of grape bushes as well. Or grape plants is what they call them. So if we need to, we can start harvesting those. We'll see if that becomes necessary. Um, you still need to be treated. We'll say no medicine on that. And she just ran off to, yeah, wash up. We really need to get that well built. It's just such a long process. Still have 610 work left. That's going to take a while. Okay, so our prisoners. I do have the prison labor mod installed. It's not really relevant at the moment because I can't have these guys do a whole lot. Um, what we will do is work and recruit. And I will probably just set them to clean their area at the very least. Obviously they can't do that now, but um, once they're capable of moving around, at least they'll keep this little space clean. And then Eel. Wow. That is going to be one hell of a recruitment. Um, yeah, we'll do work and recruit. We are on the home stretch of the building project here, so he's going to be done relatively soon. I've also asked for a burn pit to be set up out here. So that we can start burning the, um, well, corpses, for one. But also, we'll want to be throwing, like, fecal sludge in there just to um, get rid of it. So, uh, for example, from the latrine, we'll have to drain that. Uh, there was, like, a bedpan in here as well, I think. So, all the waste will find itself over there. And the reason I built it here is because anything within that radius... If you spend too much time in there, you can get sick. So we want to make sure it's not overlapping with you know where our people are living. And is that done? Almost. And then we don't have to run all the way out there to wash our hands. And people should stop getting sick, too. Um, there's still some blood and stuff here. Oh, good, and the eclipse is ending. We can start growing food again. <sighs> what a mess. And that's the real danger of a playthrough like this, is an eclipse can be a game ender if it lasts too long. Because we just don't have a means of producing food without sunlight. So that's something we'll want to keep an eye on. Oh cool, it's done, and yep, everybody's washing their hands. What are you doing? 
just hanging out looking at the water somebody's finally planting crops oh you're harvesting okay they have an ambrosia sprout actually a lot of them apparently and god there's a lot of predators on this map is that our first bit of pemmican yes it is fantastic Smoked meat and rice. Probably not the tastiest pemmican, but it will get the job done. And we're finally getting the packed dirt in. So nothing should be able to grow on that. It is, I think, considered dirtier than a typical floor, so that will be somewhat problematic. But it is more, again, historically accurate, so I'm going to bite the bullet and just deal with it. Um, anything else? Right, we still need that warehouse, which hasn't been touched yet, but, you know, we had some stuff that was truly, truly desperately needed. Oh, no, did this wolf... It rotted before we were able to actually butcher it up. That's unfortunate, because that's a waste of food. Well, if we need to, we can go out and hunt. There's plenty of stuff around to kill. Um, this cougar is injured, and that wolf is dead. We should probably go snag it. What are you doing right now? Eating? After you eat, do me a favor and... Really? Can I get you to pick this up? No. Uh, okay. Then what we need to do is create a new stockpile. Doesn't really matter where. We'll put it next to... Actually... Hold on. Let's fix this real quick. So... We're going to make a couple of these, actually. Two different bills set to do forever. The first one, it's only going to be human-like corpses. And it'll be fresh or rotten, but we're going to say that colonists are not allowed. So only strangers will get cremated. And it doesn't matter if they're rotten or fresh. And that could be anybody, doesn't matter, whatever. Then the other one, we're going to say only rotten and only animal corpses. And hopefully, I can then grab somebody like Atius and say, uh, can I ask him to clean that? No? Hmm. Need fecal sludge, right. So, can you empty this? Use, no. I guess we'll have to wait it says it's 34%, but I guess we can't empty that until it's full. So we'll have to wait a little bit, but we need to make some room so that I can store that uh, other animal in here somewhere. What is this? Another dead wolf. Um, there's a dead warg. That one is rotted as well. How long did we have on this? Oh, two days, so we've got time. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff out here that we can kill if we need to. A lot of bears, actually, which I think will be okay if we, you know, form up. Oh man, something went down out here. Unfortunately, we didn't get to it in time. Those are all rotted as well. Uh, that fox is not, so we'll make sure we grab that. Oh, got some double bear action out there. We'll have to be very careful when we grab that one. Are you dead? Cool. That one, oh, ha ha right when we saw it too but yeah we got like corpses delivering themselves to us only we had caught it in time but again we can go hunt the bears or something if we need to that'll be plenty of meat and I think if we form up all three of these guys with the two oh damn it now we got two rotted animals in here well at least we know of two that are not rotted and won't rot for a while so we'll want to capitalize on that and I think that's where we'll end it for today. Got a lot of kind of tedium ahead, so I'll take care of that off camera. And we'll come back hopefully with some progress here. And some progress here. And hopefully doing a little bit better on the whole food situation. Now that we have access to pemmican, I think we'll be okay. Though we do need to get our uh, crops planted again. I should probably fix this. Um... I'll set that at two. No, we'll leave that at one. 
Britannia will have it at two. Stilico, a four, probably. You can have it at three or four, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So that's where we'll leave it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.